Welcome back to The Wine Crush. I'm Laura Lawson, and you are listening to the show that's trying to actually account for taste. As we noticed on the break, all of us have our own stories about taste one way or the other. I was thinking about me and all my girlfriends when we get together. We're all in the wine business. We'll take one particularly wretched Chardonnay, take a sip, and say, Oh, my God, this is awful. Here, taste this. And then as we listen to our booth, Kent's saying, yes, he just dates women with no taste. So we get kind of it's all the sides story, together. <laughs> totally taken that out of context, but okay, that's fine. I'm on radio. I'm allowed to take things out of context. That's what the media does, Kent. Go. Anyway, right now, as we digress, we are very fortunate. We are joined by David Vogels. He is the editor of the Sommier Journal. The Sommier Journal is a wine for profe- a magazine for professional wine people. It was first published in April 2008, but honestly, I think it's one of the best magazines out there for people who want to learn about the serious side of wine. So on that note, David, welcome to The Crush. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's fun. I always like to have a fellow media person on air. It's always interesting. Uh, sure. we, we are talking today a little bit about taste. And when people go to restaurants and when people bring themselves bottles of wine home and when they sit down and try and garner everything that that bottle and that glass has to offer. And obviously part of what a sommelier does is to help people transcribe their flavor impressions into words. How can our listeners work on talking about the taste they are tasting in their wines better? Well, that's a good question. You can uh, you can compare it to things. That's what most people do when they're learning how to taste. You can compare the uh, aromas to different fruits, flowers, uh, nuts, berries, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and m- most uh, tasting notes are just comparisons. So that's uh, that's certainly one way. I think that works. David, give our listeners a little bit of your uh, your background so they can know where the expertise on taste comes from. Well, I'm a professional journalist myself. I have a journalism background. Um, I got into wine as a uh, consumer and a collector and just got very interested in it, started taking classes. I'm sure some of your listeners have gone down the same road. And uh, But I, I'm also a publisher, so I, I just saw a need for a magazine for wine professionals. So we started it about uh, a year or so ago, as you said. There definitely is a need for a magazine for wine professionals. They also need an institution for all of us, but the locks need to be on the outside. So <laughs> yes. we're, well, we're still working on that. All of us tend to be a little bit, um, I don't know, extreme and a little bit insane. Well, we're uh, we're known as the magazine for wine geeks, so I, I take that as a compliment. Absolutely. And there is something that the Sommier Journal does that I particularly like, And it brings an interesting facet for our listeners. They've heard me discourse on Robert Parker. They've heard me just go off the deep end about the wine spectator. But what the Sommier Journal does is they get together, they taste wines, they give the description of them, but they don't tell you, oh, this is a 94 point or this is an 89 point. You leave it up to the reader to go ahead and garner. Explain to us that mentality and how well it works for you. Well, that's that's obviously a conscious decision on our part because – our readers are professionals, and they they trust their own palates, and I you know I think a lot of your listeners probably do also, but they they just want to have recommendations, and that's what we do. We give them a, we give them hints about what they should try, and then uh, we expect them to go out and try it and see if it will work in their restaurant. So, and we we don't want to be in the position of someone saying, uh, "Sommelier Journal gave this wine a 95" or something like that because that's that's not what we're about. It seems like that would also start biasing people all the way around, when all of a sudden, whether you're in Vegas, whether you're in New York, whether you're in Washington, and all of a sudden all the sommeliers had the same wine list, it would get a little creepy. Yeah, um, people want variety, I think, and there there's a lot of variety in restaurants, so the, the wine list um, should reflect that. I think one thing we've noticed in the last few years is that when we talk about the concept of wine professionals, uh, I know for a fact there really weren't that many around 25 years ago. If you had to attest to me and my group, there's not many around now. But wine professionals, just like you, are people who got into wine almost, they fell into it or as a hobby. Everyone started off as a novice at some point. What would your advice be to our listeners who are just starting out in wine and are learning to appreciate their own palates? How can they develop that on their own? Well, you can certainly do a lot of uh, tasting. I mean, that's that's what everybody does to get better. Um, do as much tasting as you can on whatever economic level you want to. And uh, But also, I, I would recommend going to winemaker dinners, um, that kind of thing. They're, they have them in all major cities. And uh, try taking a class or two. 
because that's what got me into it. Um, there are introductory level classes at various universities and institutions. Um, I got my training through the Culinary Institute of America in California, and you can anybody can fly out there and take classes, and that's that's true of a number of institutions around the country. Now, being called the Sommelier Journal, do you ever feel the need to say uh, take classes from the the certified Sommelier Guild? Um, well, there are there are various uh, organizations that certify sommeliers, and we we try to stay neutral. I mean, we we support all of them, and we support their their efforts. Um, but I think people who want to work their way up through the system, there are various ways to do it, and uh, we write about that. We we have and we have authors from uh, various of those organizations. Actually, I see on your list, uh, Tim Geiser, Laura De Pasquale, they are guests that have been on our show in the past, uh, speaking from a sommelier's point of view. But when you look at it from a media point of view, like you were talking about finding a magazine for wine professionals, what made you think there was something missing? Was there, it was just cohesive unit, or are you seeking to spread information? Oh, I, I think both. Um, we're, we're trying not to be a, an organizational kind of magazine um, because we, we want to, uh, as I say, to kind of cross boundaries. But, um, yes, people do need information, but um, I, I think there was a need for the profession to, to have a, a written journal, and uh, that's what I saw was lacking. Was it hard to start a new wine magazine when you look around and you've got something like the Wine Spectator, you have the Wine Advocate, you have the Connoisseur's Guide, you have Food and Wine, you have all the different ones out there. Were you nerve-wracked trying to start a whole new publication? Well, it, it's, uh, it is a bit nerve-wracking in this economy to start any kind of publication. And, uh, but we're, we're not trying to compete with the consumer wine magazines. Um, uh, what, one thing that pleasantly surprised me was that it wasn't that hard to get material the magazine because there are a lot of good freelance writers out there and that's primarily what we use so from that standpoint it wasn't hard but it is it's difficult uh, for any magazine to start out and get subscribers right off the bat i think that's kind of the fun thing about wine professionals and by now you've learned it Uh, if we're passionate enough to make wine our lifestyle we'll talk to and write anything about it when we can obviously i can I can stand on my soapbox about that. Uh, but, David, we appreciate you being part of the crush today. It's always nice to hear an outsider's point of view and let them know, or let our listeners know how they have come to be in the world of wine. And uh, we encourage our listeners to check it out at sommeljournal.